the gramophone. And that's a photograph of my mom when she was little. <laughs> she sure looked happy, didn't she? Because parents were all happy when they were children. But then they grow up and start getting all gloomy and as boring as can be. Oh, what's this, do you know? A song about a screw? It's total nonsense. Nonsense? It's about a screw, which means it's practically about fixies. Why don't we listen to it and find out? If it's good, we can all dance together. How do you listen to this thing? Like this? Why don't we try to use the player? We won't fit in there. Look, right here it says gramophone record. See? So we need to find a gramophone player. Find what? Let's go to Grandpoos. Grandpoos, we found a song about a screw we want to hear. We're looking for a player for a gramophone record. Ah, I understand. What you need is a gramophone. A gramophone is an old appliance that was made for playing back sound that was recorded onto records. If you want to turn on a gramophone, you need to turn the handle to wind up its spring. The spring makes the record spin. Then a needle is placed on top of the record, and as it moves through the groove on the record, it shakes a little, which makes a diaphragm, a sort of mini drum skin, start to vibrate. The big horn of the gramophone then makes the sound louder, and we hear a voice or music. The most amazing thing is that a gramophone doesn't have an electric motor or any electronics. That's right, you don't need electricity for a gramophone to play back the sound that's recorded on a record. That's because a gramophone is an entirely mechanical wonder. If you want to know, there is a gramophone in the office of Tom Thomas's dad. It's on the desk. Great, let's go. <laughs> Thanks would be nice. I can't find the on button. There is no on button. You need to grab that handle and turn it. Now take that thing and put it down onto the record. Hmm, it's not playing. Look, there's no needle in there. And where can we get one from? We can make it. Do you have any nails around here? Is this good? That'll be great. Verda. Are you ready? Totally. Better cover your eyes. Working, listen. A little screw went for a run, and now without this little part, everything just <laughs> falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without a with no little screws in there. The bulldozer was a strong one until there was a thud, and then the mighty giant fell straight into the mud. music playing. It's a gramophone record. Gramophone? I thought it was broken. We fixed this old... Uh, not we. I fixed this thing. Really? What a wonderful boy I've got. Other kids are breaking things and you fixed them. What do you say we play that record once more? I used to love it so much when I was little. The mighty crane was working until there was a pop. And then the mighty giant gave out and lost its top. Five, four, three, two, one. A little screw went for a run. And now without this little part, everything just falls apart. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. If you think a screw is nothing, take it out, but just beware. Everything will break without them with no little screws in there. 
Mrs. Mom really dances super. Yeah, she knows how to have a good time, even though she's a grown-up. If you think a screw is... GPS. And three, four. Stop. Who goes next? I'm next. Five. One, two, three. Three. And... Wait, I gotta choose a route. Should I go here or there? Choose already. Nolik, what are you doing over there? Nothing at all. Just waiting at my place. Good. And don't get off it. Wellfire? What was that? The alarm on my fixie tab. Oh, our lesson's about to start. Hurry! What about the game? Later! As soon as young Fixies enter their first year of Fixie school, everyone gets their own Fixie tab. It's a little computer that can do anything at all. Well, almost anything at all. Studying with a Fixie tab is fantastic. You can read it just like a book and write in it just like writing in a notebook. You can use a Fixie tab to listen to music, watch movies, find your way around, and talk, text, and send letters to your friends. And if you want, you can use a Fixie tab to go on to the internet that humans use, or you can visit the secret Fixie internet, where you can find news about the world of the Fixies. And Fixie tabs have games on them, too. Of course, these games can be a lot of fun, but you shouldn't play games until your homework is all done. Faster, or we'll be late! I know a shortcut we can use, this way. Now which way do we go? I need to remember the route. I think it's this way, or it could be that way. Well, which is it, this or that? Uh, I have no clue. Uh-huh. So what's our plan? We'll go back and start again. We flew in from there, right? No, I think it was there. That's not how we flew in, it was there. Ah, uh, I think we're lost in here. Uh-oh. No, like, stop the panicking. I only went, uh-oh, I'm not panicking yet. It's your fault, Fire. I know a shortcut. Go this way. How are we gonna get out of here? How do I know? All I know is that we're late for our lesson. Thanks to someone. It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Now Grandpa's will punish us. <gasps> What's going on? Well, I think I found a way to get out. Which way? Right here. I forgot that inside of my fixie tab is a GPS navigator. Wes, uh, what's a navigator? A GPS navigator is an interactive electronic map that can help you find your way around. The navigator can figure out where you are by using signals that are sent to it from satellites. All you have to do is type the address of the place you want to go into it, and the GPS can figure out a route to get you there. And then it helps you as you go by telling you where and when you need to turn, so you can easily get to your destination. Let's see. Right now, we're here. And where do we need to go? <laughs> you know where to school. But where is that? Are you joking? In the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Can you be quiet? Where do you want to go? The laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Please wait while I chart out the route. Ha! It did it! <laughs> the navigator says to go there. Hey, what are you doing over there? Come on! And if you happen to go off route, the navigator will give you a different way to... Well, you finally made it. Unfortunately, you missed an important lesson today. We got lost. Forgive us. In case you're wondering, we were studying navigators. And you know what? 
We just used a navigator to get here. Yeah, it showed us the way we had to go. Well, that's certainly quite lucky for you, because now you don't get an F. But from now on, kids, you have to get here on time. I promise you that, because now we know where to get our shortcuts from. Knots. <gasps> Pirate? Why'd you hit me? That's it. I'm tired of playing the wind. Where are my pirates? This looks great. Can I board your ship? And what are your skills? Tons, like protecting the ship and yelling hooray when we win. And how about good sea knots? Can you tie them? <laughs> of course I can tie them. Then tie up our treasure and make sure it's good and tight. Pirates, prepare to attack. I got it. That's done. Good enough. Hooray! It's good and tight. Now can you survive a storm? Without a doubt. <gasps> Whoa! 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 Our treasure! It's sunk into the sea. That was my that was my mom's necklace we sunk. I'll pick it all up, don't worry. No, thank you. We'll manage ourselves. He calls himself a sailor. Go and learn to tie some knots. <sighs> Try tying two ropes into a knot. You think it's easy? A badly tied knot will untie itself before you know it. Here's one way to tie it right. First, cross over the two ends like this. Now to finish the knot, you've got to cross them over again. But not this way. It's got to be in the opposite direction. When it's done, it looks like one loop inside another. This kind of knot is called a square knot. And it won't untie as long as you tie it right. And that's just one of the many kinds of knots a sailor has to learn. Oh! Okay. I knew I could tie it. Now what else is there to practice on around here? I found some more of our treasure. Here's another one. That's 19, but we're supposed to have 20. I know it because I counted our treasure. So what happened to the last one? Well done there. So what else could I tie? Perfect. I even remember what it looks like. It's a different color. It's a bright red one. Oh, Mom's going to notice right away that the red one's gone. i got to go find it. Yeah, I think it's on the floor. Who tied my laces together? I was just practicing, sorry. And what else did you tie up to practice your knots? Um, uh, not sure you want to know. You're funny. Let's go and tie them. That way, I'm scared. She's just staring at her own whiskers, Nolik. And what have you done to her whiskers? Well, I tied them with the square knot. Fire, you're just a blockhead. And why don't you tell us what else you've done? Well, okay. I tied a decoration on her tail. That's where it is. We were looking everywhere for that thing. Fire, go and fix everything you've done. Chusaka, don't run away. Don't be scared. We just want to untie the knot. Sailors have developed all sorts of different knots. Without them, they couldn't control their sails. But we couldn't get by without knots on land, either. Mountain climbers use tightly knotted ropes to help them climb and keep them safe. Fishermen tie hooks to their fishing line using special knots. You can't even pitch a camping tent properly without making a knot. When people sew, they tie knots in the thread to hold it in place. 
And doctors use knots when they stitch and bandage a wound. And a tie wouldn't be a tie if you didn't tie a knot in it. Sneakers won't fall off your feet. And the laces won't drag on the ground if they're tied with a proper knot. But sometimes things can get knotted up by accident. And that's one time when you don't need to know how to tie knots, but how to untie them. All aboard! Like that? Now the only thing left to do is tie a knot. Should I tie it? Are you sure it won't untie? You're joking. Why don't you go ask Yusaka if I can tie a knot like a sailor? Reflexes. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop. Come on, jump. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R. What's the lesson? Hmm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Whoa! No kidding, they protect us. Uh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? Ah. 
It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, That's although... great, so let's go and train the dog. Ah, <sighs> nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> It's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. The armor. Two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Ready or not, here we come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one. But I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Ah! of the night he came to life. Well, how much longer are you going to look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. 
And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the clocks. Go around. Left side. That's crazy. You'll crash. No, I won't. See, I told you. What? Huh? Nothing. Hmm. Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with a computer. Uh... Mm. Mm. This stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? how? She gotta know things like that. Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks too. Push it. Wow, you did it. It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh-huh. And now the clock will go slower. Fire! Now that clock over there. Let's go do it. That's it! We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great! Yeah, 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 yeah! Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool! Amazing! He got another one! Awesome! You're unbelievable! Way to go! Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! Yay! I did every level! Oh, thanks! You're both just the Time Masters of the Universe! Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock. Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning! What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do, but everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done, Time Masters of the Universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay, we'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. 
Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy to read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Tom Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha, <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. The dog. <gasps> it's about me. Fixies? No, it's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <clears throat> Choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are gonna get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good job, but no one understands me. <laughs> Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. 
And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. <laughs> Ah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Add a girl, Chusaka. Well done. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Whoa! Finally, they understand me. The Draftsman. Pew! Ha! Huh? What? Hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you drawing? I'm not drawing. This is called drafting. What's the difference? Tell me, is that a circle? Sure is. And that? It's a circle, too. Only, it's a rounder one. Of course. That's because I drafted it with a compass. And now I've got a real target. So now I'll load my dart gun. Whoa! Why'd you shoot that thing at me? It was the gun. I didn't even pull the trigger. What? Did it break? Hmm. Let's open it up and see. There. This little part broke. Let me go find Papu. He can help you. He can make another one. A brand new one. <laughs> Oof. Wait. I can draft a technical drawing. Will Papu's understand how to read one of those? Are you kidding? Papus is an expert at everything. <laughs> Done. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're a real technical drawer. A draftsman, Nolik. That's what they call it. Try drawing a perfect circle by hand. Can't do it, huh? Well, with the help of a drafting compass, your circle will turn out great. Just put the needle point in the center and turn the compass, and it's done. A compass is only one of the many different tools for drafting. For example, if you need to draw a straight line, use a ruler. And if you need to draft a frame for your picture, you can use a triangle. First draft one side, and then the other. And then to finish your frame, just turn the triangle upside down and draft the two remaining sides. You'll get a perfectly squared frame. There are also drafting instruments for making curved lines. They are called irregular curves, or French curves. But actually, now people use computers more and more for drafting technical drawings. Papus! Huh? Oh! Uh, what? What happened? We really need your help. One of the parts broke in Tom Thomas's dart gun. Could you make it? What kind of part exactly? Look, here's a technical drawing. So, you even got a technical drawing. Very good, then. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Here you go. Super. Let's see. Hmm, it's not gonna work. You see, it sticks out here on the side. I need to draft another technical drawing. Huh? Ah! Nolik, you scared me again. Forgive me, but the part has to stick out over on this side. Uh, 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 and you're sure that's all? That's all, for real. Tom Thomas, it's done. <sighs> Listen, while you were gone, I realized that the part needs to have a hole right here. Papus? <laughs> ah, ah. 
Again? Uh, sorry about this, but there's a hole in this thing, too. A technical drawing is a special kind of drawing. It has to precisely describe the thing that needs to be made. To do that, the drawing must be very accurately drafted and include all of the measurements. And that's not all. If the object is complex, it must be drafted from at least three sides, including the front, the side, and the top. You see? The object looks different from every side. So if you don't want to work over and over again, learn to draft correctly. And boom! It works! Bullseye! And all thanks to our technical drawings. <laughs> yeah, after three tries, right? Some draftsman you are. <laughs> now I can draft all sorts of technical drawings. Even one of you, if you'd like. Uh, no, don't bother. Hey, Great. that tickles! Now do me a favor and turn. <laughs> hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. Just stop. What's going on? Now I think I got it. It's done! And what's that circle for, huh? That's the top view. You know what, Simka? That's what you really look like from up here. Nolik, take this over to Papus. He can use it to make another Simka. No thanks, Tom Thomas. For me, one Simka's enough. The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chuzaka. Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every pack -a mat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Uh, uh. Where are you? And that's how a pack mat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, fire! I'm not joking this time! Please believe me, it's there! Hmm. Nice try, fire. Oh, look! He even used smoke this time! No, Simka. That smoke's from a fire! Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth! I swear I'm not lying! This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here! Tula! Simka! <laughs> Turn off the soldering iron! Uh-huh! Got it! Be careful, kids! 
You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher. <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right, where's the fire? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! We, we put, put out, out the fire. fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> not at all, colleague. If not for you fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the motion sensor. <laughs> this part has to be replaced with one that's new. I've got an idea. How about we run to the warehouse and get it? Because you don't have time to go there. And that way you can keep on working. All right, then. Only remember the code for the part. A-8375. I'll remember it for sure. Why is Elisa always there at the wrong time? Do we have to wait till she goes away? <laughs> what for? We'll sneak out behind her. Did it? Did you find the part? It's here. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah we're, we're ready. ready. Let's do it. Professor Eugenius, you're in here. Uh, do you know why this door just opened ah! and closed by itself? Ah, of course I know, Elisa. It's because I converted it into an automatic one. You see, I installed a motion sensor above it. A motion sensor is like an electronic eye that watches everything that moves in front of it. Did you ever wonder how doors open by themselves at places like stores or at the airport? They open with the help of motion sensors. If the sensor sees that someone walks up to the door, it sends a signal to the door's electric motor. The electric motor opens the door and then automatically closes it after the person walks through it. That man is just astounding. Only a bit untidy. The door is automatic now? Then why didn't it open for us on the way here? Because we're too little for that motion sensor. But the part's bigger than we are. Big enough for the sensor to see it. Then how do we get in there? We can fool that thing if we stay close by the wall. Now let's keep this as close to the wall as we can. This door is a little too automatic. And these parts are here again. Didn't I put them away? Ah, the sensor still noticed us. Here's what we gotta do. Let's break it. Why do we gotta break it? All we have to do is deactivate the unit. 
lasers are used to help people in all sorts of different situations. For instance, motion sensors notice when someone is moving so they can automatically open a door or turn on a light. Some automobiles are equipped with rain sensors. If it starts raining or snowing, the sensor automatically turns on the car's windshield wipers. There are also sensors that react to how much light there is. In the evening, when it gets dark, light sensors can be used to turn on street lamps. And in the morning, when it gets light again, the sensor switches them off. A smoke detector can sense when there's smoke inside. The sensor can be used to turn on a fire alarm or even an automatic fire extinguishing system. I turned it off. That should do the trick. Great job. Let's go. Titties! <laughs> Professor Eugenius, mission accomplished. Well done, Fixies. Uh, actually, not that well. This part here is A7583. Uh-huh. And I asked for A8375. Digit, didn't you say you knew the code number? I did know it, but somehow forgot it. Ah, uh, Digit, I can't believe that you forgot it. All right, we'll just have to go out one more time. Thanks, but no thanks. I'll get it this time. I forgot to warn the professor that we've turned off the sensor. And I'm afraid he's expecting that the door will automatically open up. Professor!